This will be our last session together. I will do my very best to pack in as much as we can. I am sorry for those who must have missed my earlier post from yesterday which clearly stated that I already have more questions than I have time to answer, and that you have spent the time in writing your new ones. My time is so limited, I am unable to respond to you. I have a long journey I must make shortly, and cannot be late for it. Let's begin. I have always been very confused on the subject of God. Having been tossed around from religion to religion by my parents, it is hard to discern which God to believe, or have faith in. Should I keep on having faith in the fact that the world around me is God, and that there is not one particular being that deserves this faith? Religion is either actually created, or at very least, heavily influenced by us. There is no such things as God. God is a human concept, which is a misunderstanding of the original concept of Creator. This is further confused, as there are many macrocosmic level creators, or logos, as has been explained previously. God implies some separate entity which is outside of you, which you must supplicate to, and worship, our one infinite creator, and almost all of our logos and sublogos, do not want your worship. They want you to understand creation, and your place within it, as a co-creator. Ultimately, there is a supreme being, in the form of the one infinite creator, but we are all a part of it, rather than its subjects. None of the names given for this supreme being by your religions are the true name, but they are indeed correct, in that there is one supreme being, namely the infinite creator. They just have different concepts about it, which spring from the texts their religion is based upon. Do not worship your infinite creator, but rather live in a state of thanksgiving and service to it, for bringing you into being, and for this amazing game it has created in which we may forget who we really are, in order to remember, and know ourselves once again, as the Creator. So basically, the form that we have is actually just a body with bones and skin and so on and so forth. What matters is our soul or being that is inside us that makes us question and deal with our surroundings and life, so when we die the pain and suffering is just part of our human shell and has nothing to do with our soul or being which will carry on into the next life or density. Indeed. Pain and suffering are just aspects of the game. They feel extremely real whilst we are playing the game, and indeed they have to, in order to make you believe that the game is real. No one really dies. But rather, the matter of human form is shed, much like the chrysalis of a caterpillar, when the butterfly emerges. Look upon physical incarnation as the chrysalis in which you may transform. I feel as though I am like Shelby, but have lost my way, or I am just so confused and not in tune with my inner self that I cannot figure out what is my purpose in this game. Is there anything you can shed upon this? Your purpose in the game is to work upon yourself, to grow, develop, and transform yourself into a more positive and loving being. You had certain goals that you planned to achieve before incarnating here, which is a main reason for the veil of forgetfulness being in place, because if you already knew what your goals were, the game would be too easy. Look at the things in your life that you most love to do. Ask yourself what makes you most happy. Experience these things as often as possible, as they will be related to some of the things you chose to put into your soul contract to do whilst here. Also, look at the negative things, that often seem to recur during your lifetime. It will be highly likely that these are also things that you chose to come here to work upon. Let us say for example, that you chose to come here to work upon patience during this incarnation. 
you will likely find that you have a tendency towards impatience, and that life will often bring many experiences to you, in order to test your patience. The idea being, that rather than losing your temper, you work upon your impatience, and resolve to become a more temperate and patient soul. This same analogy may be applied to all manner of circumstances in which life will test you. Look for and begin to identify any recurring issues you have, that you perhaps struggle to deal with, and seem to present themselves to you, time and time again. Perhaps anger, being abusive, selfishness, hatred, cynicism, and the list goes on. Whenever you find recurring circumstances, it is because you are being presented with opportunity after opportunity, to work upon these issues, until you get it right, and choose a way of behavior that is more positive. Once you've successfully identified these issues within your life, worked upon them, and used them as the tools of transformation that they are, to improve the quality of your character, you will notice that these things seem to almost cease to appear in your life. You will still be presented with them at varying intervals, to check that you have not forgotten that which you have learned, but they will be fewer and far between. I hope this may give you some clues as to how to identify the things you came here to do, and how to go about working upon yourself. My life has been a troubled one for a while now, having been so soaked and brainwashed into the human life form and way of life, but lately I feel as though I am starting to wake up and see things more clearly. Am I doomed because of the path I have taken for most of my life? Or can I still save my soul? You are not doomed, and your soul does not require salvation. No one's soul does. There is nothing to save it from. It is good to hear that you are awakening, and that is another reason why I am here at this time speaking with you. Our infinite creator has many messengers, and he uses us all in our own unique ways, to help with the awakening and prepare as many as possible, for the coming great harvest. But as I say, you are not doomed, and there is nothing to save yourself from, except perhaps, from ignorance. And I do not mean that in an insulting way, but rather, ignorance is in a lack of understanding. At the very worst, you will have to repeat as many third density cycles as is necessary in order for you to learn the things you need to learn, in order to progress and graduate to fourth density positive. But one thing is for sure, you will get there in the end. All will find their way home, to our infinite creator. Rest also assured, that you will not find yourself lost in your cycling. At the end of each physical incarnation, as I've previously stated, you return to time, space, or that which has been described as heaven, where you shall once again know yourself as you truly are, a unique and beautiful soul, and a part of our Creator. You only forget who you are during incarnation. The object of the game, is to wake up within the dream, and in effect, become a lucid gamer, to remember who you really are during the game, and to then begin working upon the things you came here for. Rereading this topic, with discernment, will provide you with plenty of clues on how you may choose to go about it. Thank you for your time here with us, and I wish you the best, it has been a pleasure speaking with you and listening to your knowledge. We wish the same for you brother, and ask that our infinite creator bless you and guide your path. See you when we get home. So is the harvest an all or nothing event? Or will it be a mixed harvest? A few moving to fourth density, a few moving towards fourth density in service to self, with the great majority repeating third density? And if only 94% go to fourth density negative, then you have to repeat third density and try again for a 95% negative harvest? If so, 
then I would hate to imagine how much more negative your people would make the Earth at that point. I'm still confused about your part in this. In order for you to move on to the fourth level, it must be a 95% negative harvest. In other words, to reward your people with fourth density, 95% of the human souls have to be in the self-contemplation process as far away from the infinite source as humanly possible. That just doesn't feel right to me. It does not feel right to you, as it is not right. You have not entirely grasped the concept. I shall attempt to clarify. The harvest is mixed. Those who are 51% or over on the positive path will graduate to fourth density positive. There. You will work upon love and compassion, and it will be a very beautiful world to reside within for you. There will be very little negativity. Just a small enough amount that you can still use it to exercise your free will in choosing who you are not. But it will be so much more obvious than it is here, that the negativity is a tool to be used. You will see the interconnectedness of all things. And you will know that you are not separate from one another, or from life itself. You will not use words much, unless you choose to. Telepathy becomes the normal method of communication. Everything is open, and you cannot hide your thoughts from others. From that incarnation onwards, you will not have to experience third density incarnation again, unless you later choose to do so from higher densities, as we have done. In order to perfect the art of service, or unless you somehow, in a fourth density world of abundant love and beauty, inextricably manage to be 95% negative at the time of future harvest, and slide back down the snake, instead of ascending up the ladder, to use another game metaphor. Back to this current great harvest, we do not require a 95% negative harvest, as you have deducted. Instead, what we require, is for us to personally attain a 95% negative polarity for ourselves, not for you. We must be 95% negative, at least, in order to graduate to fourth density negative, and earn the opportunity to clear our karmic record, of all the negativity we have created on this planet, before returning to our rightful place as sixth density guardians of our galaxy, and teachers of wisdom to those in lower densities that ask for our assistance. If we do not make it, we will remain trapped in the third density cycle with all those between 94% negative and 50% positive, what I termed lukewarms, and have to continue to provide negative polarity for you. Harsh as it is, our only way out, is to be as negative as possible, to graduate. We cannot choose to be positive, because that is not what we came here to do for you. That's why I often have referred to all the horrible things we've done here as our sacrifice. You said that the lukewarm people at the time of harvest would not notice anything has happened, but they'd be on a different planet. Do you mean that they'd wake up with no memory of what has occurred, but still be in the same physical body? Or they'd wake up in a new physical body with no memory of any past life? There will be a short experience of zero point time, where you feel actually at one with your infinite creator. It will be a feeling of blissful, ecstatic expansiveness and unity, whilst your physical vehicles, bodies, are dissolved back into light, and transported to your new environment. When that transition is complete, the zero point time will end, and you will appear in your new game zone, or planet. You will look the same, think the same, feel the same. In fact, it will be just like you all had some mystical experience, and life will carry on as normal for you. Same houses, family situations, jobs, friends, lovers, everything will seem the same as before, 
You will not remember the great harvest or earth changes that occurred as the planet Earth heals and regenerates herself. But you will recall your mystical experience and that will give you hope and a new opportunity to choose a more positive future for yourselves. There will still be the same negative polarity to overcome, but if we are successful in our negative graduation, which we shall be, others are standing by to take our places pulling the strings from behind the scenes. We have more than done our job in discharging our service to you. And we are tired. It is time for us to clear our karmic record and return to being the being of light which is our true essence. You keep saying help is available to those searching for truth. All we have to do is ask. What is the best way to go about this? I have never had the ability to remember any of my dreams. Read back. I have given guidance on dream recall previously. It takes practice, and is a slow process. But you have to start somewhere, be patient with yourself. What specifically can I do to receive guidance on how to reach the state where it is easier to discern truth from untruth? Work upon yourself. Go inside, in a state of meditative contemplation. Still your mind, that your soul may have room in which to make its still small voice heard. Ask your infinite creator to help you and listen to your inner voice. Be patient. It takes time to develop this inner communication after a lifetime of neglect. When you persevere and keep working on yourself, gradually it will come to you. And when it does, you must learn to trust in your inner guidance, no matter what others may say. That is the ultimate test to trust what you know deep inside as your truth, even when the whole world tells you that you are wrong. It is hard work to trust yourself when all those around you doubt you and call you crazy, but it is the job you came here to do. The only real and lasting truth is a self-realized one. Messengers can come and go and show you truth until they're blue in the face, but it will not be your truth until you have realized for yourself, deep within the core of your being, that it feels true for you. You should never accept something as true, just because someone tells you it is so. But when your inner voice guides you that a truth is true, and you feel that old warm feeling of excitement welling up from somewhere deep within, that says yes. I knew it. Hold on to that feeling, Feelings are the language of your soul, and guard it carefully, as you can be sure that your newfound beliefs will be challenged in many ways. It is designed this way, to test you. Your inner truth must be able to withstand the test of time, and will be given a thorough examination. Hold fast to it, so long as it is what you know to be true deep within. Allow nothing or no one outside of you to pull you from your path, no matter how fiercely they contend with you. They are just doing their job, even if they may well not even be aware that this is what they are in fact doing. They are performing an important service to you, and you should be grateful to them for that. We wish you well on your journey, and ask our infinite creator to protect and guide you upon your path. Do the Orion, occultist groups specifically target civilizations before they become a social memory complex? Yes, but that does not make them immune to targeting others too, if they allow any chinks to appear in their armor. In short, the Orion Empire are fourth density negative. They are lost in the sense that they have drifted so far from their true nature, that despite many attempts, we have been unable to reach them, and help them to develop. They exist within their group soul complex, mostly as a group of discarnate entities, within the astral planes of the planets they visit. They have no intention of returning home, and instead seek to feed off of negative energy, to keep themselves going, as they are disconnected from their inherent natural life force.
by refusing to abide by the infinite creator's incarnational principles, the time we spend between our lives in time, space, is intended to restore our soul energy from within, in order to continue our upward progression. They are essentially imprisoned within the fourth density negative cycle, as there is no negative harvest beyond the fourth density. So they spend their time traveling the galaxy, basically using the dark side of the force, negativity, to achieve their means. They will eventually be brought back before the one infinite creator, and dissolved back into the intelligent infinity, source of all, though they are being given every chance for as long as possible, to learn the error of their ways, and return to seeking the positive, and to begin their journey back home. Their main trouble is, they do not want to go home. They see themselves as being gods, and do not intend to submit to the authority of the One. Why all the sudden ramping up of control mechanisms? The Great Harvest is fast approaching. Time to really bring on the polar extremes. The Montauk Project. Fact or fiction? The project is fact. Though the publicly available information is in some ways corrupted. What are the best ways to decipher between truth and fiction other than what we perceive to be truth, specifically concerning the new age of gender in the dogmatic church's ideologies? Follow your heart. Listen to, and trust, your inner voice. Please explain the wanderer's roles and what value it is to be a wanderer if you have no recollection of your past lives. Also how does this play with the law of non-intervention, that's if they are here to help people. The wanderers, or travelers as they are also known, are those from higher densities, who have chosen to incarnate here at this time, in order to perfect service to others. They still have to remember who they are, and part of the concern is that sometimes even they, do not manage to awaken in the game, such as the power of the illusion. They are here to awaken themselves, and then to help awaken others to prepare for the coming great harvest. Though even if they fail to awaken, they are not bound by the third density cycle, as they've already mastered it. Once their incarnation is over, they are again free to return to their appropriate levels. Are there any non-corrupted parts of the Bible, and if so, what Bible version would you suggest? No. As with all sacred texts, they have been distorted from the original information that was given with each translation. Though again, as with all sacred texts, there is still much truth hidden within them. Much of it being metaphorical. If you can find pre-King James versions, that is the closest you will get. Good luck with that. Was there Roth's child lineage the organizer of the Illuminati in which Weishaupt later formed? No, Weishaupt was just a puppet on a string. The Roth's child lineage, not its original name, with a preeminent line closing the net of control over humanity. But even they are a less aligned within the family. As I have said, the names you know do not have the real power. They are part of the family, but not an original part. My question is this, what can I do to attract more like-minded individuals to come together to uplift my people's turning to the path of ascension? I've decided that this is what I can do to express my personal act of service to others. And a very wise and compassionate decision it is. We are proud of you. The most important thing, is not to force things, and not to be so impassioned in your delivery of your message, that you put people off the content of the message itself. There is a balance that needs to be found between your urgency to awaken others, and your compassion for the lack of understanding in their condition. Always adhere to the law of free will, and never force your message. In getting your message out there, whilst being informative, 
always do your best not to feed the fear and paranoia, as this will act contrary to your intentions of raising the vibration to positive. Deliver your message in a way that emphasizes the hope, and the true beauty and reality of our inherent oneness with our infinite creator. Be, as a light, shining in the darkness. Do not burn others with your light, but rather, allow them to be drawn to your light, and be of service to those who come to you willingly. Do not become evangelical with your message, but rather, be the enigmatic and loving wise old sage, to whom others are drawn to because of the quality of his vibration, rather than the volume of his rhetoric. Most importantly, practice that which you preach. Others must be able to see the effect of our infinite creator conducting his wonderful work through you. We wish you well in your task, and are hopeful of a positive harvest for you. But above all things, keep working upon yourself, and keep choosing the positive, and being of service to others. Because you desire to, not because you feel that you must. We ask our infinite creator to bless you and guide your path. While I understand that death is not the end of my existence, I like my body and would not like to get caught out in any earth changes if I can possibly help it. If your family permits, please could you reveal which places are more likely to be relatively safe during the next three to four years? Would the south of China, Canton, Hong Kong, or Patagonia be good bets? Or any other places? I am not permitted to say much here, as there must be those who remain in their locations, to help others who are not aware of what may be coming. Many of you, whether you are aware or not, have chosen this lifetime for that reason. But, if you are insistent upon escape, choose the highest places you can find particularly in the southern hemisphere if you are able. The Peruvian Andes is a good place to be. There is much spiritual power being exercised there, and the Guero elders are well aware of what is going down. Are John Lear, Jan Lamprecht correct in their assertion that the majority of planets of the solar system are inhabited? Most definitely. Not all on a third density level that you can see though. Is the Earth hollow? Hold on, let me just check. Yes, definitely. How does one gain access? I am not permitted to say. I recently experienced healing of a minor health problem by sending love to all the sick people in the world. How does this work, not why? How? Because there is only one of you here. Understand that that is at a deep core level of your being, and you will then understand how it works. As you do unto others, so you do to yourself. You claim your family was put here to be the negative influence of the world. Is there a family that is asserting a positive influence on us as well? Is it up to us, humanity, to be that positive force? An interesting question. There is such a family, or group more accurately, but you cannot see them, and neither are you aware of their existence. They help the planet from a secret inner location, by the quality of the energy work they engage in and project outward to you, from the source. Yes, it is up to you to be the change you wish to see, in yourself, and in the world. Your goal is a negative harvest yet you clearly are touting the benefits of a positive life. This seems antithetical to your goal. That is not so much a question as an observation, but if you could elaborate on that, I would appreciate it. Another very perceptive question. Thank you. Our goal is a negative harvest for ourselves, not for you. We provide the catalyst of negativity for you, and it is up to you what you do with it. The drastic extent of the negativity we create though, has more to do with us, than it does with you. Some of my earlier replies should make clear why that is so. 
Also, in response to your observation regarding the antithetical nature of some of what I have shared here, there is a simple explanation. Let's put it this way, I have already been, shall we say chastised for going well beyond my remit here. It was not intended that I be as open as I have been. In fact, if you follow the topic through again from the beginning, you may notice how my tone toward you, collectively, has softened somewhat during our discourse together. I have, as far as possible, adhered fully to the laws of free will and confusion, although there have been instances where I have said more than I should have. You yourselves will not suffer for this, however, when it comes to my next cycle in fourth density negative, and working off my karmic record, I will have to accept the consequences for my actions. But hey, I figure I've got a negative enough life to come as it is, so what's a little extra going to matter? I was reluctant to be the one tasked with this communication. I still very much have a weakness for compassion. But I obey and discharge the assignments given to me. It has been a very long time, since I last spent any time in having direct dealings with your kind in general. I do not mean that in an offensive way, just that the vast majority of my time, I only ever see family during my daily and nightly tasks. I do not live what you would call a public life. I am sheltered and secluded. I did not anticipate how involved I would become in this process. To be honest, I really did not expect so many questions, and such a warm and open-minded reception, from the majority. You could say, that I have in some way, grown somewhat attached to you. In effect, this window of opportunity, has also become such for me too. What began as me just doing my duty, has become more a labor of love, and when this is all over by the end of this evening, I think I will actually kind of miss you all, and miss having this involvement with those of the outside world. I was chosen because it was desired that someone of my diplomacy skills would be best to deliver this message. Due to the very nature of the subject matter, there was much potential for discord. It was felt important that the message did not become lost in a self-righteous or defensive delivery system. So, you got me. And I'm actually glad now in retrospect that you did. I sit here and chuckle to myself, in light of the way some people here have spoken to me. How this discourse may have descended into something ugly, were certain others amongst my family who were also considered for this assignment to have actually been given the job. Now I know why I was chosen. As with all things it was meant to be this way. I couldn't care less what others think of me so long as I know I am serving my creator as he desires, to the best of my ability. His is the only approval I require or desire. I have nothing to defend, so I guess that's why I was perfect for this task. Anyway, enough with the sentiment, I have more questions to answer. A common saying among Christians is Satan's greatest trick is convincing the world that he didn't exist. I think there are Christians that would look at what you've written and see it as an elaborate truth to make the devil look good. Satan is a human invention. It is simply the personification that which you have given to all the negativity that has existed on this beautiful planet. You didn't know who else to blame, and as you could not find it within yourselves to take any of the responsibility, Satan was created to absolve yourselves. Many of my friends and family are Christians, and they would likely think the same. How would one even go about presenting this information to a person of that mindset? I am not here to spread your gospel, but I would definitely like to share this with a few of my friends. How can you present anything to ones who have no desire to have their belief system challenged? They will believe what they want to believe, 
and nothing you or I can say is likely to make any difference. It becomes ingrained at a subconscious level, and when a belief structure becomes that insidious, the only way it is likely to change, is through a mystical experience or such a personal demonstration of another way in the life lived of another, that one cannot fail but to notice that there is something different about them. How can you reach such as these? Only by example. That being said, is it okay if I condense your writings into one long post on my blog? I need to make sure that doesn't violate my user agreement here. I would also like to make sure that I won't get a visit from the men in black if I do so. That is amusing, thank you for the chuckle. Yes, you are most welcome to collate this discourse for presentation elsewhere. The only thing I ask, is that anyone choosing to do so, respects my wishes and copies only the message itself. In other words, do not include all the petty side discussion. If you want to present this message to others, please honor my, our, original intention, that the message is presented as a whole. When I said in my opening post, that I required provisional faith or suspended judgment, I made it very clear why this was the case. I couldn't care less that people do not believe it. I never expected that many would. But what I desired, in asking for the above, was that the message was allowed to be presented in full, with all genuine questions replied to, and then once the process is complete, you can say whatever you like about how much of a hoax you may or may not believe it to be. If I may be crass for a brief moment, I couldn't give a flying fuck how much vitriol and scorn is poured upon our message, or how many futile verbal attacks may be launched against its messenger. The message will reach all those it is meant to reach, and that is exactly the way it should be. It is what the Creator wants. Those with ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to understand, will hear the message, and the seeds planted will grow strong in such fertile soil as these. Thank you for posting some of the most interesting information I have ever read. I am a bit of a crackpot, and I scour the internet for conspiracies, alternative news, UFO videos and the like. I can't say I am ready to completely buy what you're selling, but it has definitely resonated with me. You are welcome, and I in turn thank you, for reading it with an open mind. I would never ask or expect you to buy what I'm selling. If you notice, I have stated throughout our message, that the very last thing I want, is for it to be blindly believed, or taken as gospel. As I've said, it is yet another in a long line of catalysts, that your infinite creator has provided you with down the course of history. A catalyst is not meant to be believed. It is meant to present you with a challenge to that which you think you know about reality. And that is all it is meant to do. As always, how you respond to the catalyst is entirely up to you. Just the way it always should be. Thank you very much for your very incisive and perceptive questions. Whether you realize it or not, you have contributed greatly to this discourse. We wish you well, and ask our infinite creator to bless you, and guide your path. You have put out some incredibly well written information, almost like it flowed from your being onto the thread. And that is possibly the most perceptive realization in this discourse thus far. It also allows me to respond further to an earlier question, that I indicated I would go into in more depth later, when replying to your observation. This message does indeed flow from my being, onto the page. I mentioned before, that my role in my family, is that of the spiritual discipline. A certain poster made all manner of assumptions as to what that role entails, and flailed wildly wide of the mark in the process. As I said previously, all of the power lines, off-world bloodlines, 
that comprise the inner sanctum or hidden hands of the family have certain abilities that third density incarnates do not possess, even the others of our family, the lines you know, one of these being the ability to know their entire incarnational past, with focused concentration. There are a wide array of tasks to be attended to, that allows our family to function effectively, and we each specialize in certain areas or disciplines, in order that the body of our family runs like a well-oiled machine. My area, and that which I spend the vast majority of my time actively involved in is that of spirituality. Our spirituality, not that of the peoples of the earth. Others below me deal more in that area. I could be likened to that of a priest or a minister. In the same way as your religions and spiritual teachers have the responsibility of listening to the voice of their creator, and delivering his messages, so too do I. I have been actively engaged in this role now, for a great many years. It has become second nature to me. Actually, more accurately, it has become first nature. A large part of my role, is to constantly be in the awareness state of our group soul, Lucifer. That is why you will notice that I so often refer to we even as I am speaking in the first person. That has just become natural for me. I spend most of my time speaking with my family, as Lucifer, the group soul perspective. When I speak henceforth, it is not me, the individual soul spark that is speaking to you in essence, but rather, for want of a better description, because it is far from accurate, you could say that in effect, I am channeling Lucifer. That is why this discourse flows so easily. As some have noted, the chances of me having spent however much vast quantities of time researching all this material to hoax with, and presented in the fluent method that I do, as in regular daily installments, whilst I guess could be remotely possible, is unlikely in the extreme. For those who are open enough to receive the above explanation, now you know why, and how it is done. I speak not for myself, but rather, for him who sent me, my own creator, Lucifer. I know and have experienced that which he knows and has experienced, because essentially, we are one and the same being. I have never been involved in any organized religions per se, but have always been spiritual. I do look at the many religious texts out there, because I believe they all have parts to the story. One can find great knowledge from many different books or religious texts. I believe that we as humans are creators like the one creator, and we are all one. I also believe we will be moving into a higher level of consciousness where we can consciously co-create in our world, since we are only unconsciously co-creating at the moment. Your insight serves you well. There is so much more I would like to speak with you about but I'm not able to think of what exactly I want to say. Thanks for those great words that you speak to us and I appreciate what you are doing, with love. Do not worry friend, we feel your heart, and that does not need to be expressed via the confines of limited words. We can speak all you like, and will be happy to do so, when the game is over. Also, do you know of Miriam Delicado? I just watched her interview on the project Camelot site and it was very inspiring to me. So let me ask, are you one of the tall blondes that she speaks of? She is a beautiful soul. I have not seen the interview of which you speak, but we know of her experiences. The tall blondes of which you speak, are of pleasure and heritage. They are working with what is known as the Galactic Confederation of Planets. They serve the positive vibration. Plegerans are from the constellation you call the Pleiades. Its actual name is the Pledgeers, hence Plegerans. And no, we are Lucifer, 
and nothing directly to do with the Plegerans, though they are indeed good friends of ours. I have never seen a UFO or any of this spiritual stuff myself. I just know in my heart that it's the for me to find. What can I do if anything to get myself in the correct frequency to see these things and have these experiences? Any and all information you provide will be greatly appreciated. Simply believe, and know in your heart of their existence. Think about it. In all of this vast creation, can you really believe that you are alone? I will pre-warn you though, so as to avoid disappointment, you will only receive communication from them, if that is something you have already agreed to get there in your soul contract before coming here. Many here at this time, millions, have a part to play in the great awakening, and preparations for the great harvest. Many who do not believe now, will begin to open their minds, as the earth changes that are coming begin to take effect. People will be terrified, and have no idea what is going on, because the governments have concealed this information from you. These travelers, or what some have termed star seeds, are incarnated here to help on the ground level, when this all begins to play out over the next few years. When the time is right, they will come forward. Most people are not ready to hear this information yet, but not so far off, they will be. Many of these starseeds have not awakened yet themselves. The Confederation stands by, ready to help them to do so, if it is necessary. For ones such as these who have yet to awaken, they will have felt all their lives that they are somehow different, and they have a deep sense that somehow, they do not belong here. Many of them will also have many dreams and even visions of their lives on their home planets. Many of these star seeds are in fact Bledgeron. That is why the tall blondes keep showing up. To help their family awaken to their assignments here, I am another of the many grateful forum members who appreciate the loving message given by hidden underscore hand. I wish I had discovered this thread before today. It's given me much comfort. I was running out of strength, but now feel as though I might just be able to manage. My gratitude is eternal. From this little spark to that one, thanks for the light mate. You are very welcome. We are glad to have been of service. You actually feel very familiar to me. If for the reasons I am feeling this to be the case, consider this message to you our part in our soul agreement fulfilled. Take the guidance in this message into your meditations, and also seek information from your dream time. Test these words deeply, and take them into your heart only if they feel right and truthful to you. If they do, then act upon them, and allow nothing or no one to deter you. Arise and play the part that you volunteered to be here for right now. It is almost time. Prepare yourself and be sure that you are ready. We leave you with our strongest encouragement, and the love and light of our one infinite creator. He could be, what he says he is, I think. But he could be a well-read but bored person wanting to see how far his helps will spread on the internet. The thing I do find is that if he is the latter, it doesn't fit the profile. I mean if you read up on the stuff he obviously is interested in, it is harder to wantingly hoax with it. It goes against the things he loves to read about. And I find it very hard to believe that he is researching this on the fly and putting all this work in something he will never get any more fame than this week of attention, no money or real life recognition or whatever more. I was not going to respond to any more messages other than those who genuinely want to hear what we have to say, due to my fast expiring time here, though your point was poignant enough to briefly address even if only that the accuracy of your statement deserves to have a place in the final collated version of this message. 
a lot of work and pointless time wasted, were it not for the fact that this labor of love is all done for the glory of our Creator. The lies and rumors about us being an evil and satanic being have gone unanswered for far too long. It was time to set the record straight. Lucifer has sacrificed so much, because we love you. As spirituality is your focus, could you comment on the role of the Catholic Church in terms of your role and how the Church fits in either the positive, negative, or miscellaneous parts? The lower parts of our family, the names you know, use the Vatican for many rituals and sacrifices. That should tell you all you need to know. Any specific holy books, or perhaps Bible authors, you'd list as coming very close to the truth. The closet biblical authors are those who have been left out of the publicized editions. The closest spiritual writings, other than the raw material, to containing truth about the nature of the One, are the Taoist writings, that of the Tao Ching, and the Book of Guang Tzu. Greetings Hidden Hand. I consider this a unique opportunity. I have not read this full thread but I have some detailed questions, so I apologize if something has already been answered. I want to make sure I get my questions out before your time expires. Almost all of your questions have been addressed, and those few which have not, I am sorry that I either am not permitted to speak on, or that due to the tiny amount of time I have left now, I cannot address. My apologies. I hope you will answer my following questions. You may be aware of me, as I also cannot reveal all that I know. My question is of a different nature, which I cannot get answers to. My bloodline is of the elite, as to say Austrian Count, English Earl, Scottish Baron. It seems at some point in the last 100 years, one part of the family lost everything, taken from the government. There is a lot I wish to say, but do not wish to tell for all to see. Are you aware of this happening? Are you aware of, what really happened? The English side will not say. Generations of family live there, then taken by the government. Something happened. All in my family, including myself, had extensive abilities, myself seeming to have the most. I am also aware of all you have spoke of on here. I would, if you have permission to do so, and I know this would be allowed due to this lineage, like to talk to you on a personal level. Ask who you have to ask, you will see I am truthful and genuine. Please do not see me as arrogant, but that is the only question I do not know. Obviously you understand that these lines you speak of are only the earthly lines, and we, off-world power lines, do not often intervene in such inter-family circumstances. All I am permitted to say, is that there was a dispute between the Habsburg and Franco-Prussian lines. Things were said and done that should not have been. Consequences arose, and action was taken. As for communication on a personal level, I am sorry this is not possible. I hope that within the limits of that which I can say, you have the insight to connect the dots. We wish you well in your tasks here, and will likely see you in the near future, if you are going to Malta in winter time. No need to reply, as I will have taken my leave by then. We shall deal with these next two posts together. He is reptilian. That's the race of the bloodlines. They control just about everything behind the scenes. And remember there's no such thing as a bad race. Just select individuals or groups who stand out more than others. I have another question for hidden underscore hand. Reptilians are described as being very aggressive, arrogant and perceive humans to be nothing more than cattle. So what's with the split personalities? 
You're saying you are loving and spiritual, and yet everyone says reptilians are fearsome beings. That amuses us. We are most certainly not reptilian, and there is nothing remotely reptilian about the true power bloodlines. The only reptilian influences that are in any way remotely involved with this planet at this time, are those of the Zeta Reticuli and Alpha Draconi systems. They are of no particular threat to you. For those to whom it may be of some interest, we are of Venusian heritage originally. What is another name that Venus is called by? Connect the dots. Well. That is all the questions I promised to answer out of the way, and my time here is now pretty much expired. I have another few minutes before I must finish preparing for my long journey. There was two later posts, that I will just barely have time to offer a passing answer to. Dear Hidden Underscore Hand, I clearly know and am aware about this game, but I have a question to you. Do your 3D families have fractions? Do they not know this, all of them? Because they, have tried to kill me, and it will not work of course. All I can say on this is that even the earthly lines of our extended family, only know as much as we tell them. Certain information they may not use wisely, or with proper regard to our creator, and our one infinite creator. As has been said before, the top of the pyramid, is not the top of the pyramid. Above the highest earth line auspices of the Supreme World Council, and another higher aspect that cannot be named, are the hidden hands. Of course not the real name, but what we have sometimes been referred to. Even Lucifer had to step in to help me. That was a surprise as you can understand. Does your left hand not know what the right hand teaches? Or is it lack of understanding in certain members in your bloodline? Indeed, I understand. Occasionally drastic intervention is required. As I said, they do not know everything. Some things are best kept to ourselves. Temptation can prove too great, when certain powers lay in the hands of those whose heart is not utterly pure of intention. Let us just say, that some seem to enjoy the game a little too much, from time to time. Their actions were more from ignorance than malicious intent toward you. Please forgive them, as they knew not what they were doing, but thought it the right thing. I've just finished reading the last few pages of questions. I stated on a few occasions that I have no time left to answer, but I was asked earlier a question that I said I'd finish with, namely that of, if there was a question you had not yet been asked yet, would you consider this a being asked, or words to that effect? So there is one other question from the last pages that I will use in that vein. This will really have to be it though. I am truly sorry I cannot reply to the many other heartfelt responses that sadly must remain unanswered. We must be leaving for an important task in Rome, and already I have others here with me imploring me, will you please just shut down that flipping computer and get your things together? They are laughing at how involved I have become in this task of mine. My father is teasing that I should begin at early 6th density again to balance my compassion. Anyway, I must finish. This has been very informative, and has cleared up much for me. Thanks once again, hidden underscore hand. My take on this is much different even from what it was the last time I posted in this thread. So, hopefully these questions will be a little more relevant. I am curious as to how the bloodline family structure works. You said there are people who are part of your extended family that we may know of. So are these the Rockefeller, Rothschild, Bush, House of Windsor, etc., typically known in conspiracy circles as the New World Order? How close is your interaction with your extended family, 
And are they as spiritually enlightened as you seem to be? Can you just kind of give us an outline of how the family is structured, how much each level knows in relation to the top etc? Because there are a lot of theories and know-it-alls out there, and it would be nice to get it straight once and for all. Be as detailed as you feel is appropriate. And this will have to be a really brief overview, as my time is up. Starting at the bottom level, you have what we call local cell groups or family clusters. There will be anything from say 5 to 30 or so of these, depending upon the size of the town or city in question. Each local area has its own council, comprised of local leaders representing the six disciplines of learning. There is also either a high priest or high priestess of the order, who serves their local community. Above this, you have the regional council, with the leader of each local council representing their specific areas. Then the national council, in the same vein, with the leaders of the regional councils sitting to represent their regions. Then you have the supreme world council above them all, with the national leaders representing their countries. Above this, is another group I cannot mention, who liaise with the hidden hands. Then above this, there are many other levels of leadership, purely from the power lines, the ones that are not of this planet. The Supreme World Council, only know as much as is handed down to them from us. In our power lines, we have a similar structure, with local and regional groups etc. Though most of us are living in entirely different types of communities than you would understand. All I shall say is that we are not surface dwellers. Also, do people ever try to leave the family? I asked you to comment on the case of one named, Sfilly, in an earlier post. I am still curious if she was one of you or your extended family, or is she just a mis disinfo agent? I am aware of her, yes. I've not looked at her supposed revelations personally, though heard enough from others in my family. Yes, she was a part of the family, at the lower levels, from the German lines I believe. As I understand, she did reveal a lot of truth about the lower levels, but she was only regional level in the earth lines, so not that high. She certainly would not have had anything like the bigger picture. I understand that she went into detail about some of the training techniques in the lower levels, which to be fair, can be extremely harsh. Though as I've said, it's all about reaching the 95% negativity, and when all is said and done, no matter how much one may have suffered in this life experience, we can never lose sight of the fact that this is a game we are all playing here together, and each incarnating soul has already chosen and agreed in advance the parts they will play in the game. No one really suffers, except in the game, and ultimately, they have chosen these experiences beforehand, at a soul level. No one is forced to incarnate into a storyline they do not want to play and learn from, the German house is renowned for being particularly harsh and severe in its training. So much of what she shares may have happened, though my family have also said that unless her trainers were acting out of protocol, abusing their power, much of what she revealed would not have happened, or has been embellished to some degree, for whatever reason. I cannot comment myself as I've had neither the time or inclination to examine her story. The world of my own family is very different from that of the lower Earth-based bloodlines. Whilst our, my own, training growing up was very strict and disciplined, we were never abused in any way. We grew up with the bigger picture, and didn't need any other motivation. The Earthlines are not aware of the entire picture, they themselves are not of our Lucifer group soul, and as far as they are aware, they are out to rule the world, to control and enslave, 
and create as much suffering and negativity as is humanly possible. That's what they get out of the deal, world domination. You'd have to say, with that in mind, they're doing a great job. But one of the things they don't know or understand, is that our Venusian power line's agenda, is ultimately for the highest good of all concerned, in providing you with the catalyst. If they were aware of this truth, there is a slight risk that they would not have done their jobs properly, and they would miss out on joining us in our 95% negative harvest. They are aware of the harvest, and the need for them to attain the 95%, to get out of third density, and that is all the motivation they need to help us achieve our ultimate aims. How they go about it, is not really of too great a concern to us, as long as they are getting the job done. Sometimes we have to step in, where something they may do or plan goes against our desires, but such instances are few and far between. And with that, I absolutely have to finish my time here with you. If I leave it any longer, I am going to be late for my journey, and I will not be very popular if I make my family late. It is a strange feeling I have now in my heart, as I write these last few lines. I never could have imagined I would have connected with you all in this way through this discourse. It was never the original intention, just to put out the information required of me. But somewhere along this journey we have taken together, I have come to feel a certain bond, with you. Of course, I know that bond is our inherent unity in our one infinite creator. Though to have kind of met and connected personally with so many of you, has left me feeling somewhat saddened that our time has come to the end. But come to an end it must. I thank you sincerely for your gracious hospitality, and for allowing us to use your space here, for the furthering of our message. And remember, no matter the ideologies that may separate us in this game, the message is all that matters, and the message is, that in the love, and the light of our infinite creator, we are all one. Brothers and sisters of the light. We wish you all the very best in what remains of your journeys here, and sincerely hope for you that you will use the catalyst we have offered you, to in some way help you to graduate with a glorious and positive great harvest. Me, on the other hand, I'm going to have to go and do some really negative things now to make up for all this positivity. Kind of amusing, in an ironic way. I look forward to meeting up with so many of you when the game is over, and enjoying reminiscing about this time, and the parts we have all played in this great game. We leave you all in the love, and the light of our one infinite creator. Namaste. Thank you.